Does Yuri Kulik got a spot on this Sabres roster? Well, he's doing pretty well at the Prospects Challenge. We'll talk about what kind of room there is for a rookie to make it at Sabres training camp. That's coming up here on the Locked on Sabres podcast. Your Locked on Sabres, your daily podcast on the Buffalo Sabres. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. And thanks for making Locked On Sabres your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. That does include our YouTube channel. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday Ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. Sneaky Jody Biasi coming to you today on a Monday. Sabres Prospects Challenge is about to wrap up a little bit later this afternoon. In fact, not too far away from Sabres and Penguins to wrap up the Prospects Challenge at Harbor Center. So we'll talk about what we've seen so far. We'll put a bow on the Prospects Challenge on our next show. But I've already got some takeaways that I want to get into from the first two of the three Prospects Challenge games by the Sabres. One individual in particular that I really want to get into who's been the best player at the whole tournament so far, and that is Yuri Kulik. We will talk about Yuri Kulik and what we could be looking at for him in the next month. I think it's a big, big month for Kulik, and I'm that's given that he's already started it so hot. I said that Isaac Roseanne was the guy I needed to see have a big month more than everybody, anybody, but, you know, he's doing fine but not wowing me, and I don't think he's wowing a lot of people. So that, I would say, arrow is trending down a little bit. But more on those guys coming up in a little bit on today's show. If you want to check out the Locked On Sabres podcast, uh, be sure to do it on our YouTube channel. You can do it wherever you're listening to your podcast. You could also be a part of our Locked On Sabres text club to do that. If you're not already a subscriber, because if you are, you can just text whatever you want, question or comment. Uh, I got a couple of those to read through. You could sign up by going to joinsubtext.com slash locked on sabers. Going through some of our texts, uh, a lot of questions like from one texter will, will Kulik play in the scheduled preseason games here in the States? That question, if you're not familiar with the Sabres preseason schedule, is tough to answer right now because I don't know how good Kulik's going to play in the first few preseason games. But at some point, believe it'll be probably like the Monday, September 30th, about their their fourth and their fifth and sixth preseason games are probably going to be just Rochester guys. Everybody else, they're going to take to Europe to play a preseason game in Germany and then play the two openers with New Jersey, or if not even play, have them on the plane, have them ready to go. I would predict right now on Kulik, He's going to get taken to Europe. I've got two big reasons for that. One of them's not his play, by the way. I've got a second big reason why I think he'll go there. My prediction, though, yes, he's going. More on that, though, coming up when we talk about Kulik more extensively. Another thing that we got into when talking about um, our, some stuff, some stuff in our uh, Locked on Sabres text club. It was presented on Twitter earlier here on Monday, uh, a news update that I would have otherwise not seen because I'm not driving down by the arena. And to my recollection, they, they're they done. They got their new Jumbotron. They've got the new big screens up. They, re they redid the roof, right? You don't see those worker guys climbing up on the roof anymore. At least I don't think. There was that Lindy Ruff setting the blue and gold standard blue and gold standard YouTube series, which by the way, if anybody watched that, I, the Sabres are annoying me on a multitude of different levels recently. If you watch that, the Sabres basically took content. They've already recorded and published Lindy Ruff doing earlier in the off season and just put it all together in one big video. They, it's almost like a best of Lindy that they, they, they kind of, promoted it as this new material and there's you know marty's in there and rob ray's talking in there about new stuff that i don't think we've seen before but maybe scotty bowman too but felt like a lot of it was hey we just 
took some other videos that we did during the off season. We put them all together. Felt like a best of uh, series. So I don't know. Not, no, I didn't go through the whole thing once I realized that that's basically what it was. Um, anyways, long story short, what I was getting to is there was that too, but I wouldn't have seen this. You, I'll share it with our YouTube channel as well where you could see it. Uh, take a look here at Alumni Plaza down by the arena. The Sabres are taking down the mural in front of the arena, the one that everyone walks past for every game that you've ever been to in the last 10 years, I think at least it's been up where you've got the, the old timers, you got the, the Rene Roberts, you got the Gilbert Perros on the left side and the, the mural that kind of leads you to the arena where it's kind of taking you through Sabres history. Eventually you get to Pat LaFontaine and then Dominic Hasek and then Michael Pekka and then Chris Drury. And then Max again off. They better not take Max down. Max stays. Everybody else can go. Then, Ryan Miller, Jason Pominville, Thomas Vanek, and for 10 years at least, actually it's probably been more, it's probably been 12 years, the last person on that mural is Tyler Myers. Tyler Myers has not played for the Buffalo Sabres in nine years. He was the most recent player on that mural. So... And I get why they didn't update it, right? I mean, they could have put Jack Eichel up there maybe at some point in time when he was a Buffalo Sabre. They could have put Tage Thompson up there. They could have added to it. There were two more panes of windows. or There were two more, yeah, panes of window glass up there that they could have put added mural over, and they just, they've never decided to. They've just never, they've never done it. Uh, that thing is not updated forever. It's one of the things of the arena that you would say they just haven't really updated it. The bricks, by the way, below that, they have also not updated. I don't think they've added a player. I think I saw this on Twitter the other day. A, a player brick. They, they have these columns with all the bricks of all the players that have played for the Buffalo Sabres, right? Not all of them. That was the goal. That was the idea of it. Uh, they haven't added a guy since I think Remy Ellie is the last person, like a fourth liner from five years ago. They have not updated that. So Alumni Plaza has kind of been left there and not touched. And all right, I've got a crane. I've got a truck. Let's see. What are they going to do? Brand new mural, maybe? Uh, are they going to do a, the team picture? Someone pointed out in our text club that the Sabres used to just put the team photo of that current roster up on the mural. Maybe they'll do that. I don't care what it is. Anything. Just show me you care about what the arena looks like. Show me you want to put any effort into it. And finally, after 12, 13 long years, uh, they are starting to put some effort into uh, Alumni Plaza. So what do we, what do you want to see? Who should they add? There's really no one from the drought they can add. They're not putting Eichel up there. They're not putting Reinhardt up there. They're not putting Ristolainen up there, right? You don't have a lot of feel good nostalgia from the guys of that, of that era. Maybe would they put Kyle Poso up there? We got to do, you know, we got to do everything for Kyle Poso. He's a legend, right? Putting to retire his number. So maybe they'll do that. Um, but otherwise I'm not really sure what their plans are other than they're taking down the current mural slowly, uh, slowly, but surely. All right. When we come back, Yuri Kulik is looking great at the prospects challenge. What could that mean going forward? I think it could mean a lot. It could be the beginning of a big, big September for Yuri Kulik. That's coming up here on the locked on Sabres podcast. We are presented here on the show by our favorites over at FanDuel Sportsbook. You've got over-unders right now for Locked On or for the Sabres. Uh, I don't have my own over-under. For the Sabres, you've got 87 and a half right now for their team point total. And we were talking all about that on our Locked On Sabres roundtable. So stay tuned for that. That'll be dropping in our feed anytime soon with the guys from Locked On Red Wings, Locked On Sens, Locked On Canadians, and then myself. Uh, we went around the room kind of talking about the lower half of the Atlantic Division. And in the course of doing that, we put up the numbers. Hey, what's everybody expected? Ottawa, just above the rest, 92 and a half. Then you had Detroit at 89 and a half and Buffalo at 87 and a half with Montreal way down at 77 and a half. So if, uh, if you're trying to get in the hockey mood and a props got your, your attention, check it out over at FanDuel Sportsbook. And you've been hearing us talk about FanDuel. It's America's number one sports book. Little something different for you. Add it in. Now through September 22nd, so you still have almost a week. All FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial 
of NFL Sunday Ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then, with the YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out of market game. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment, and you could cancel at any time. Just visit FanDuel.com, download America's number one sportsbook. Sneaky Joe DiBiase back here on the Locked On Sabres podcast. I just mentioned we have that roundtable with Locked On, the, really the guys from the Atlantic Division, Laura from Locked On Canadiens. Uh, so we'll be talking about that, uh, and that'll be dropping in our feed uh anytime and maybe by the time you listen to this it's already there so be sure to check that out also locked on bills previewing the upcoming matchup with the jaguars in a week and looking back on the dolphins with our buddy joe marino be sure to check out locked on bills all right so the prospects challenge rolls along the sabers are one and one you might be listening to this during the game a five o'clock game against the penguins on monday afternoon at harbor center so so far you know we've had some some guys stand out tyler tulio is one. Who's Tyler Tulio? you might ask? Oh, isn't that the guy from the Savoy trade? Yes, it is. Tyler Tulio was kind of the throw-in to the Matthew Savoy for Ryan McLeod trade that was sent back to Buffalo as an extra piece so that it wasn't one for one. Fifth round pick of the Oilers in 2020, 22 years old, hasn't done much of anything at the AHL level. We're talking 47 points in 117 AHL games. So not really anything to write home about in the American Hockey League for this guy. Uh, but, you know, we'll see. Maybe he could be a core Amherst. That would be my expectation. The ceiling is call-up guy at some point. So don't need to spend too much time on him. But he had a nice goal the other day. Won a face-off, too. You know, he's he's done that stuff like that. Consta Hellenus, first-round pick of the Buffalo Sabres. You know, he looks like he's, to me, doesn't look quite like Benson did last year. He looks good, but he's not blowing my doors off. Good. Uh, he had a secondary assist the other day on the power play. He's had some nice setup plays. The vision on display from Hellenus has, has been what's most impressive for me that's most easily translated in this tournament. So that's happened. Isaac Roseanne, as I mentioned earlier. All right, looks pretty good. Is he the best guy on the ice? I kind of want him to look like the best guy on the ice, but I got to be honest, he still, to me, looks like someone that I'm not, rushing to start in the in the NA, in the NHL. I just I'm not seeing the trend up towards hey, this guy is dominating. You got to get him in there. The guy that has done that, the guy that I think more so has taken the bull by the horns and is looking like somebody that is going to push for a spot on a on a pretty deep Sabres forward group is Yuri Kulik. Yuri Kulik through two games has three goals and an assist. So, and the goals that he has scored, by the way, have been, like you, you got a little bit of everything in there. You've got a zone entry goal where he dances around the defender himself and then dekes out the goaltender and puts it in the back of the net. You've got a one-timer goal on the power play, which has maybe been his most consistent play in Rochester is just standing there on the one on the on the power play and ripping one timers and being accurate. He's got a hard shot and a great release. You also have kind of a an opportunistic slot goal. You know, one that like Jeff Skinner would be remembered for is like just right place, right time. You got the puck on your stick in the slot and it's boom off your stick quick and it's past the goaltender for a goal. Three types of goals, all different that we've seen from Yuri Kulik in this tournament. The quick release is really the thing that is standing out from this player, but he looks to me like a complete player. He's playing against teenagers. If he showed up in the NHL for the Sabres to start the year, I would not expect the, oh, he's going to be good at all areas of the ice. Like I think you're going to have some growing pains in certain places, but I do think we're seeing an ability there for Yuri Kulik. And Let's just talk about the skill set and the track for Kulik. He, I think, jumped Isaac Roseanne as a prospect maybe the day he showed up in Rochester. Roseanne was drafted a year before Kulik and went 14 picks higher. Roseanne was a 14th overall pick. Kulik was 28th overall. But almost immediately it was, well, this guy should have gone a little bit higher. And then we saw the proof in the pudding. Made the Amherst. 24 goals in his first season, which was, remember, the first AHL season was almost historic 
18 year olds scoring 20 plus goals in the AHL doesn't really happen. Then, you know, he followed up with some modest growth, I might say. If you would even call it growth, the guys that cover the Amherst could tell you better than me, but I, you know, 27 goals in 57 games. His goal, his goal scored went higher by a little bit. His points per game went up by a little bit. One big difference you had was he did not show up in the playoffs because in his first season at Rochester, seven goals, 11 points in 12 playoff games. Last year in the one series, two assists, zero goals in five playoff games. That could have just been the matchup. That could have been just a bad week. I don't know. Maybe playing injured at the end of the year. Guys do that a lot. But stark difference. He was amazing. In the playoffs two years ago, he was not good in the playoffs last year. Did not produce offense whatsoever. So, what do I got? I got a guy that was drafted, then kind of shot up on the development track, and then, you know, maybe a little bit of a plateau. Maybe we're along the same line. I'm waiting for that next big step. I'm waiting for that guy that just shows up after a summer where we go, whoa. Look at this guy. Look at the muscle he put on. Look at look at the maturity in a couple of months. Look at how he worked on this element of his game or worked on this element of his game. That's what you want to see from 20-year-old first-round prospects that were drafted a couple years ago and have had two years of seasoning in the AHL. I have never had that moment with Isaac Roseanne. There has never been a time where he showed up to a camp, showed up to a preseason game, showed up to an NHL game. He's got a couple of those and went, Oh, he looks like a different player than what I remember seeing two years ago. Maybe we're seeing the beginning of that with Yuri Kulik. This would be the time for him to make the team, right? You got a 28th overall pick that 24 goals in the AHL in age 18, then 27 goals in the AHL at age 19, and has played three World Junior tournaments, by the way, and just went up and up and up in that department. He went eight points in 2022, nine points in 2023, 12 points in 2024, playing seven games in each of them. So looked great at World Juniors. What's next for him? NHL, it's time to take those months in the summer, come back stronger, more mature, and make the team. That's what you need to have happen. That's what you want to have happen. So, time to go. And this is the start you want. Him looking like a man amongst boys playing against guys that are two years and one year younger than him. And so far, so good on that front. Now, if Kulik does even warrant making the roster, where does he go? Who do you play him with? Who does he kick out? It's not an easy puzzle to piece together if He takes what he started in the Prospects Challenge, runs with that in training camp, runs with that in the preseason, and makes his case to make the team. If he does that, let's play it out over the next couple weeks. If he does that, how does it work? We'll go through that when we come back here on the Locked on Sabres podcast with Sneaky Joe DiBiase. Final segment here on the Locked On Sabres podcast at Sneaky Joe Sports. If you want to follow me on Twitter, be sure to te- check out the Locked On Sabres text line. You can do that by going to joinsubtext.com slash Locked On Sabres. Going with the uh, the red and black look, by the way, on the uh, on the old YouTube channel. So, uh, you know, if you're watching there, you would have known already. But if you're, you know, looking to watch the show, remember, you could always do that on YouTube. So we're talking some Yuri Kulik here. He's been the best player at the Prospects Challenge through two games. There's a third game coming up in, you know, just a couple of hours um, here. And then we'll talk more about that on our next show. We also still got to talk about Montreal. One last team to get to in the Atlantic Division. It's probably the team I least expect to push for the playoffs. We'll have that for you this week as well as we get you to training camp. Training camp this week. And later in the week, full training camp preview coming. So that's what to expect uh, coming this week on the Lockdown Sabres podcast with that Saturday game at 7 o'clock. The Sabres are hosting the Penguins on Saturday. That's how fast it's coming up. We will have hockey on the ice at KeyBank Center on Saturday at 7. With no ads on the boards, it'll look like preseason. Don't worry. All right. Let's figure out if Kulik warrants making the team. How does it look? 
if he has another great game in the prospects challenge and then looks really good in training camp and then, you know, has a great preseason, what do they do? And as we get into this, let me rewind to our first segment when I said to our texter, one of our texters asked, who will come to Europe with them? And I got to Kulik and said, I think Kulik goes. Two reasons. One, I think he might warrant it with his play. Two, it is his home country, right? He is from Czechia. I don't know. Am I wrong for thinking they would give him the benefit of the doubt? They tie goes to Yuri Kulik, or even they would just bring him, right? They would just add an extra seat on the plane. Let's bring him. We need an extra anyway, right? You got to go to Europe with extras. You got to bring guys in case there's injuries, right? You can't bring 12 forwards and six defensemen and two goaltenders because if you have an injury, you need somebody to come in. You got to bring extras. So my idea would be you bring Yuri Kulik along. And then you see, I think maybe for the first two games, maybe the tie would go to him because Lindy might want, if he deserves playing, Lindy might want to say to him, you know what? You had a great prospects challenge. You had a great training camp. You had a great preseason as your reward. We're, we're going to put you in for these games. We're going to, we're going to let you, it might be a once in a lifetime opportunity for him. I don't know. Right. Like, When's the next time the Sabres are going to be playing in Prague? He's not from Prague, by the way. He's from Kadan, uh, Czech Republic. Um, but it's his home country. I don't know. When's the next time this guy's going to have an opportunity to play in front of his home fans? He might never have it again. I, they might not go back for 10 years. They might not go back for 15 years. I don't know. Um, they've not played there before. I think they played in Stockholm the last time they went overseas. So I might want to predict right now that there's a good chance he makes the opening night lineup. And listen, from there, like, who knows? Like, if he looks great, he just might not come out. That's what happened with Zach Benson. Benson just got a shot, looked like a mature player. Him, it was less scoring. It was more two-way game and, you know, kind of being a responsible player. But Benson got in. It's like, yeah, we're just not – we're never going to take him out. Maybe that happens with Yuri Kulik. If he goes in, I have one name that I most would want to see come out of the lineup. If I were putting a list of lines together today that features Yuri Kulik for opening night, I'm taking Jordan Greenway out of my lineup. I kind of want Jordan Greenway out of the lineup in the first place. It's not a player that I've ever been that impressed with. You know, he's not that offensively gifted. He is big and he's physical, but he's not like crazy physical. He's physical, but he's not running around out there as the most intimidating guy in the world on the other side of the ice. I wouldn't be afraid to play Jordan Greenway if I were you know, Sidney Crosby, or if I were anybody, if I were Jack Hughes in the opener. He's also not that fast. And I do think this team tried to get faster this summer. The bottom six guys they brought in, Ryan McLeod, Nicholas Obey-Kubel, Sam Lafferty, Beck Malenstein, like they brought in good skaters in their bottom six. And Jordan Greenway, I think of their forward group right now, I think is the worst skater they have. So you put Kulik in, I take Greenway out. I don't need Greenway. I've got my fourth liners. I've got my physicality. I already added that this summer. I've got my defensive stalwarts. I don't need what Greenway provides anymore because I brought in three guys that do that this summer. I would rather Greenway come out and put in Yuri Kulik. Give me a little extra scoring flair. Give me a little secondary scoring on this team. Let me see some upside and see what he can do. But I wouldn't put him on the third line because I still do think you'd like that third line to be a little of both. You want the third line to be a little offensive and a little defensive. So a line that could do a little bit of everything, right? And Kulik, he might turn into that player. I don't know if he's going to be able to do that right away, though. You know, like, I don't know if you want to expect him to come in on a third line that's going to play really tough defensive matchups. I think you'd rather put him on a line that's a little more isolated, a little bit more offensive, that'll have a little more offensive zone time, that'll make it easier for him, right? If he's spending more time in the offensive zone than the defensive zone. So here are the lines I've got that would feature Yuri Kulik in the lineup. I took Greenway out. Line one is Tage, Tuck, and Paterka. I feel like that one might be set in stone as we ride into the season. Line two for me would be Dylan Cousins in the, at the center with Jack Quinn on the right and Yuri Kulik on the left. I would put, I kind of like that line on paper. I don't know if it would work in practice, but on paper, what do I have? I have Dylan Cousins, who I'm hoping can get back to driving play like he did two years ago. And having two 
good, really good finishers on either side of him. Jack Quinn's release and Jack Quinn's scoring ability has been a talking point of his since he was drafted, and we have seen evidence of it. Second on the team in goals per 60 minutes last year, only below Tage Thompson. And he's played a lot with Dylan Cousins. Kulik, you give him two guys that are more trusted to produce. He can be more of a, I don't want to say a floater, but he could just get to the right oppor- right areas of the ice. He could be more of a finisher. He has two guys with NHL experience that could do more for him in the at neutral ice and the defensive zone. I like Quinn a lot in his own zone, but it's a line that I'd hope is going to have the puck more often, is going to be able to score goals with somebody in the middle and Dylan Cousins that can hopefully get back to playmaking, and then two guys that can finish on either side. And if I have Kulik in the top six, it really becomes more of like a top nine, right? Because line three then, you know, this competition that you might be thinking about, like, oh, I wonder who's going to make the top six between Zach Benson and Jason Zucker. I didn't put either one on there. Because, you know, Zucker is a veteran. And I don't want to tell you that he's Mark Stone, right? I'm not telling you he's a selkie guy. He's not going to come in and be the most impressive defensive player on the ice. But do I trust him more than Yuri Kulik to play a more defensive style line on line three? I would. Last year in evolving hockey, defensive met- defensive percentile rank by uh, goals above replacement. He was amongst NHL forwards. He was in the 41st percentile last year. Year before that, the 30th percentile. Okay? I'm not saying he's great. I'm not even saying he's good. But give me average. Uh, If I go back three years ago, though, so I go to 21-22, this is what you'd really be hoping happens. He was in the 76th percentile defensively. That's what you'd hope be hoping to get. So 76, 30, and then 40, 46. Um, Zucker on line three. Centered by Ryan McLeod and Zach Benson. It's a more defensive line. It's a more responsible line. It's kind of a small line. I won't lie. But I've got more physicality on my fourth line. So I can have two different kinds of roles. More of a defensive line that's a little smaller, a little speedier. Maybe could score a little bit more between McLeod, Zucker, and Benson. And then line four is just straight physicality and straight defense. That's it. That'd be my that'd be my four lines if Kulik were going to be in the lineup. I think that's fine. I don't see any problem with that. Dylan Cousins had two rookies on his line two years ago and Jack Quinn and J.J. Paterka when he had that big 70-plus point season. Can he do it again with one rookie and hopefully a breakout Jack Quinn? To me, that's not a crazy idea. It's not that big a leap to see Yuri Kulik after starting hot at the Prospects Challenge. If he could just do enough at training camp in the preseason, I think there's a very real possibility that he is beginning the season on the Sabres in the lineup in his home country of uh, Czechia. That's going to do it for us today here on the Locked on Sabres podcast. Sabre Prospect Challenge game finale today against the Penguins at 5. If you've already seen that game, already know what happens. We'll talk more about it on our next show. And we'll get you ready for training camp and the preseason, which starts at the end of this week. Let's go. Sabres are back in town, and they are getting ready. Thanks for listening today to the Locked on Sabres podcast. Again, check out our text line, join subtext.com slash Locked on Sabres. And we will talk to you tomorrow here in the Locked on Sabres podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day.